Right on. Okay, now we're ready to start. So basically, uh, welcome everybody to our monthly release webinar for September. And um, this is the agenda of the meeting. So we have a couple of news. We want to share some reminders about useful resources. There is a national conference of villages coming up next month. And obviously the improvement um, we have added to the software this month and a demo and a discussion about the next priorities. So we're gonna start with news right away. And the first news is that we have new people in the team and I wanted to introduce you to Joelle uh, that is gonna unmute herself and she's gonna be presenting the news and reminders. And obviously we're excited about welcoming her. She's working hard on, you know, or maybe you already heard from her from her tickets and support system and, and different things, but she will introduce herself. So I, I, I let her do the talking and I mute myself for a minute. Welcome Hi, everybody. Joelle. Thank Welcome. you very much. I'm excited to see all of you guys here. So again, my name is Joelle Corte. I am, uh, I do marketing, customer service, customer success, and I handle some of the mailing here. So very excited to be here. Let's get into some of the news. <laughs> okay, so we're really, really happy. We've got three new villages this month, which is kind of a big deal. So one for the Northwest Village Network from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the Twinbrook Village from Rockville, Maryland, and Seaglass Village from Swamp Scott, Massachusetts. So welcome everybody. Very excited to have you on board. Some other news is that we've got the National virtual village gathering coming up. So we will be presenting on October 13th at 4.15. And then it's also running from this on the 6th, the 13th and the 20th. So that's something you have to register for by September 22nd at the end of the business day. It's $50 for V2V members and $75 for non-members. And then we've included the link so you guys can easily find it and register for that. That one is for me. So, um, well, you all know the national conference from V2V, um, but I wanted to let you know more about our presentation on the 13th. So uh, we will do an overview of Helpful Village because there's some people in the room that don't know about us, but I think it's worth uh, participating for everybody, essentially because we want to do a demo of a, what we think a COVID ready village. Uh, as you know, the world has changed in 2020 so much and village operations have been adapted to COVID and we wanted to introduce what we have seen villages doing with Helpful Village to be COVID ready, uh, kind of best practices. So that's something that is interesting. We're also doing some exciting announcements. So we have some, some cool stuff we have been working on and we like, um, you know, basically making these big announcements once a year at the national conference. So just for that reason, I think it's, it's a good idea to participate in that event. We will also be discussing, and it's connected with the announcements, but basically the vision of for the future of Helpful Village, what will we be working on for the rest of the year in 2021? So if you want to, basically, you know that we all always do these monthly webinars and um, discuss about different things, but here we have more of a strategic discussion of what's going to happen in the future. In addition to this exciting announcement, also new, new features that will be demonstrated to, during the webinar. So um, yeah, I think, I think it's, it's uh, even if you know Helpful Village, I think it's worth participating in that. Um, by the way, we are, we're not going to do the monthly webinar in October because we already have this presentation. So um, yeah, basically um, October 13th is the place to be for for the Helpful Village presentation. And, you know, we'd be excited to see you all there. All right, back to me. Some reminders of all of our resources. So a week from today on the 23rd is the V2V hosted webinar. Yeah, wait a minute because I'm, I forgot to do the mute all here. Sorry about that. We have some background noise. Oh God, we did mute all thing. Uh, oh, here. Manuel's still on mute too, isn't he? He's just trying to mute everybody in the background. But I can't, so let's keep going. 
All right, continuing on, sorry about that. Here are some of the resources. The V2V hosted webinar a week from today. That's something you gotta make sure you register for. Um, if you need customer service, you can always email support at Helpful Village or uh, get onto Slack and comment on Slack. For improvement ideas, please email askhelpfulvillage.com. And then you can always look at the uh, improvement ideas spreadsheet and uh, point out things you like that you think are good ideas. And then there's always the training docs, videos, and slides as good resources to access. So training documents, if you are confused about something or you uh, would like to see how something works, there's uh, different categories of them that are great to access that'll help you through things. The videos are great if you need a visual guide to get you through something, you can watch exactly how to do it and follow along. And then these are pretty new training documents that we've added, how to add an app to an Android and how to clone an event. And then for, for bugs and questions, please email support at helpfulvillage.com. And for new ideas, please email askhelpfulvillage.com. So another reminder, we've got that uh, V2V host a webinar next week, and that's something you gotta register for. And it, all your ideas and things you'd like to discuss next week, we'd, uh, we'd appreciate it if you emailed to support at Helpful Village. Or you could always contact Joanne and uh, Manuel about those ideas too. All right. I'm gonna mute myself and you can mute yourself also, Joel. Oh, you're already muted. Okay, perfect. So now uh, after we have discussed this news and reminders, we can move on to the exciting part of the webinar, which is this release notes. We have been working on a number of things this month and this things will become available on your server this weekend. So let's get that started. First thing is that we added a CAPTCHA to the contact form, also the application forms uh, to stop the spam bot. So some of the villages were getting application forms for membership and for volunteers from some random spam bot, which was sending some random characters if you were getting those. Uh, we added a CAPTCHA now, basically a detector that, that checks if, if it's a robot doing it and then blocks them out. So you may start seeing a checkbox that's saying, well, I'm not a robot. So it's the famous capture that, that Google provides and we added it to our website. I'll do a demo of this later on today. Um, another improvement we did this month is that you have the possibility in the reports area to add a member directory and this member directory shows, well, basically all the members, the active members of your village in a PDF form. Now, the new feature is that you can now select only one cluster. So for those that are on hub and spoke and they are working you know, by neighborhoods or, or spokes, now they can request a member directory for only one neighborhood. It was not the case before. Before it was all the members for all the whole village. Now you can do it per neighborhood. We realized that uh, there's a birthday report and the, that was not including the members that were in the grace period. So people that were you know, included active members, but when we added the grace period, uh, we want to have those people in the birthday report too. That's something we fixed this month. Uh, and this is a little different. This is we sent on the 25th of the month an automatic email to the village administrators with um, the expiring driver licenses and insurance for your volunteers. And so this was working before. We just realized that we were doing it even for archived users and we should not. So once you archive a, a user, it's kind of deleted or not, not visible on the system. So those people will no longer be included in the email as it should be. Uh, okay, this is another fix related to, to MailChimp. Um, so you know, you know about MailChimp synchronization. So you add a new person onto Helpful Village and then um, you click on synchronize with MailChimp and basically those people are added to your MailChimp mailing list of active members or active volunteers. So the synchronization works basically from Helpful Village. If you have a new person, you add it on Helpful Village, you click, you click synchronize and we take care of the, of the MailChimp uh, work. Now, 
some people were going on to MailChimp and removing interests or stuff like that. And, and, and basically synchronization doesn't work in both ways. You cannot, you know, we, we don't, we invite you not to modify the MailChimp uh, values, people or groups, but that you do the whole work on, on Helpful Village and synchronize from Helpful Village so that we update MailChimp. Now we added a little fix so that if you delete it by mistake, uh, a group in MailChimp that no longer produces an error and basically we can manage the situation. Uh, same thing with MailChimp, what, for those villages that are using Village Talk, um, we just made a modification so that uh, the notifications, the emails go out in the right way. Um, this also was a little, um, a little bug. There is a bio that you can define for each user and we really like this. We have seen many members adding their bio on their profile and I think it's really exciting. We were not showing it. Uh, before because it was associated with the check-in module, which is a premium feature and it should not have been. So now it will be showing uh, for villages that didn't have the, ch the check-in module. So it will be showing for all. So the bio is now more visible. Okay, this is also an exciting improvement we added this month and is um, about events. We, had, we were discussing with a village that had several hundred participants in an event and then you know, when you're adding people to the participants list of an event, you can search them in the database and add them to the list of participants. But every time you add a new person, we were, we were taking you back to the top of the page. And then you had to scroll down. But if you have 200 participants, that, that makes a lot of scrolling down. So it just make, made the system a little smarter so that when you add a new person to an event, we will take you automatically to the bottom of the list so that you can confirm that this person was correctly added. At the same time, when you add a person to an event, we're automatically adding this person to the event's mailing list. So that, that's the mailing list that manages you know, the, the calendar of events for the upcoming next two weeks, the automatic email that goes out on Sundays. So what happened before is the same, the same village was, you know, for everyone that was registering to, the, to their events, they were manually adding people to the events mailing list. But that's a lot of work, you know, manual labor, and we made this automatic. So if someone registered for an event, they will be in this events mailing list. They will be updated about upcoming events in the future. So that's also a way to save you time at the office. We modified the provider's uh, database so that there is now a phone line, but also a cell phone. If the provider has, you know, two different numbers, you can now add those in your database. Uh, okay, this one is a little long, so I'll go slow. But basically we do um, email templates, right? That allow you to send um, customizable emails to your people. For example, you can have a thank you for your donation email template. And you set up the template and we have some variables in it, kind of the donation of the amount, the purpose of the donation, the donation date, et cetera. Uh, we added another field so that you can add in your templates that is donation comment. So if uh, you add comment to the donation and then you can use the template for thank you for your donation, it will be added if you add this value. Okay, now we have two improvements we did about rights management. Uh, so basically here, the member manager can now see the notes on the admin profile of a person. So, um, you know, so you know about the rights of a person usually uh, when you're the leader of the village, you have admin rights that give you access to everything, but you don't want to give access to everything to everybody. So if you have a person that is a member manager, they can, man you know, they can manage the membership information, but um, we realized that it was also important for those member managers to see the notes on that same person. So that's, that's added this month. In a similar way, if you have a treasurer of your village, now has permission to create fundraising campaigns and manage the fundraising campaigns, which just, just makes sense. So you don't need to be an admin to create fundraising campaigns. You can do it as a treasurer. Uh, this is a little design improvement we did this month and we discussed this last month is a fundraiser description uh, label that we added on the donation page. Now it was coming here for all villages and there was no reason to do that. So now we deleted it. And this area down here where it says your donation will help support is a customizable text. So you can add this text if you want or your title at the top, but we're not forcing this title on you anymore. Okay, this is an interesting addition. Um, 
we did this month and I will be showing this in a demo if you don't understand, but basically this is in settings. If you go to the settings area on the website management, you have the uh, three buttons now. We added the third button. The first button is about the menu manager to add more pages. The second button is the editable pages where you can you know, have your list of pages that you, you create new and edit those ones. The third button is new, it's called web templates. And I'll show you a demo about it, but essentially what it means is that sometimes you can design something like a footer, uh, kind of some code that you want to have on several pages. And instead of copy pasting the same code into different pages, you can just write the code once in this web template, let's say a footer, and then add this footer in several of your pages. So I'll, I'll show the demo, it just make more sense. This is another exciting uh, feature we added is like, we added a photo gallery. So if you, we know that, well, maybe a little less right now, but villages were, when there were gatherings and pictures were taken, uh, you have the possibility then on the website to create a photo gallery where you're sharing these pictures. And I'll show a demo of this today at the, at the demo also. And another big announcement is like we added a new uh, premium feature. Um, is uh, the possibility to send text messages to, uh, to anyone in the village, essentially. Um, now this is, um, I mean, it's not free, so we need to pay for those messages. And basically it's a premium feature that your village can activate. Um, it's very cheap. So essentially the way it works is that you need to get a phone number, a local phone number, and then basically that incurs in a, in a monthly fee that will be added to your helpful village bill of $3 a month. And then uh, two cents per segment of a message that is sent or received. So, you know, if you want to send a text message, well, then you need <coughs> two cents and those would be added to your helpful village website. No, so this is an optional feature. Uh, you don't need to use it and you don't need to activate it. But if your village is interested in trying it out, uh, just write an email to support at helpfulvillage.com. And then we can activate that feature so that you can try it. I will be doing a demo of this today. So, um, you know, you will see how it works. Okay, so that's, that's it for the list of improvements. I know it's a little bit quick. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to the, um, to the demo site and a, a little bit slower to show you how, how it works. And um, this is more interactive now. So if you have questions about any of the features we indicated, um, it's a good time to, to come in. But other than that, I'm gonna switch to the website and start doing the demo, but please feel free to unmute and ask any questions you have. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm here. Okay, I wanted to show you a few things about um, the CAPTCHA first, right? So this is a demo site. If you go here to members, uh, membership application form. So you know this form already, right? It's the first name, last name, email, phone, cell phone. So you already had all this but we had these robots that were filling out these forms, creating providers and members for, that were not real. So now we added this protected by reCAPTCHA. This is kind of some Google technology that allows us to detect if it's a robot filling out those forms. In that case, they are blocked, or if it's a real person. So initially it's not, you know, it's not annoying. You can just fill up the forms and submit. And we have been testing and, you know, it, it detects that we're a real person. They use different metrics. So how much time have you spent on the website? Usually the robots, you know, they spend, I don't know, you know, under one second to fill out all these forms that doesn't seem human to Google. So they block it. So um, probably you will not even notice, but if, if Google thinks you're a robot, they will show up um, a checkbox saying, uh, I'm not a robot. And then you need to check that box. And maybe you have a little quiz about, well, do you see a, you know, traffic light or something like that. So obviously we will be rolling out this, um, this weekend. It's present here on the application form for membership for volunteers. <coughs> also added here on the contact form. You were receiving some spam also in the same way, kind of a robot that would, was coming here and sending you some spam messages through this. Uh, now it's protected by reCAPTCHA also. So hopefully you receive less PM uh, going forward. So that's the CAPTCHA capability. Uh, I wanted to show you another one. Now let me log in. Oh, the other thing is the reCAPTCHA thing is also only showing when we're not logged in. Uh, obviously once we're logged in, we know that you're not our robot because you know you have a password. 
Now let me log in. Okay, sign up successfully, perfect. Now I wanna go to see to my events. Uh, also, the other thing I, I, I didn't say in particular, but basically when, when I'm doing the demo, I'm not reading the chat. Joel is having a look at the chat. So if, if she sees something and she can, you know, interrupt, but you can also feel free to, you know, unmute yourself and ask, and ask your question. Uh, let me see, do we have one event here? And uh, we have participants here in the attendance list. Yes, so we have here a number of people that are already participating in this event, right? So one of the features we added this month is that if you are another person that let's say you had on the phone that told you that they wanna participate in this event, you can just simply search her in, um, in the database, her or him. In this case, I have my mom that I want her to be a participant. And now when you select her from the list, gonna do some work and essentially uh, it's gonna add it here to the list and then come back here to the bottom of the list. Uh, it didn't work, so I, I obviously had a minor issue here, but basically the difference, and I'll fix this, you know, before we put it on the server, uh, it, it, the difference that it shows, what we did before is when you added a new person, we're taking you here to the top of the page and then you need to scroll down and then go, 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 go down, etc. Now what we do is when you add the person from here, um, we take you here to the bottom of the page so that you can see her name uh, right here immediately. And we'll be adding her to the events mailing list too. We've got a question. Okay, okay perfect. Can we add CAPTCHA to uh, the donations page as well? Oh, I didn't, I didn't think, think about, about that one, one but uh, makes sense. We, I would be curious to hear if uh, someone has received any spam on the donation uh, because basically when you're not logged in the only type of donation we accept is a credit card donation but i don't think the spam bots can fill out you know would would send you money so it's going to be blocked anyway so i don't think we need to add it um yeah we we did have we did have a phony donation on our wow. donation page but it wasn't it wouldn't have i don't think it would have got caught by the captcha but it wow. got caught by um um it, it got caught by the um by the I, i'm forgetting the name of you you know your payment yeah. the yeah. payment thing said no this is a phony thing and oh, wow. didn't didn't accept the 10 cents they were sending us or something i mean it was bizarre they were check, checking out a a, wow. a credit card of course wow to see if it worked okay susan that's a that's really card. interesting yeah i didn't think uh some people definitely stripe they have their own kind of, you know, uh, risk management software and they detect if there's stolen cards and stuff like that. So they will block it at that time. And that, that's interesting. I will, we look at that. That is a, mm -hmm. a good point. I, I, I never thought somebody would send you money for free. <laughs> <laughs> they did though. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Um, okay, the next thing I wanted to show here is um, the web template. So let me do it here. Uh, on this other village website. I don't know why this is open. It should be closed. And basically, let me go back here. If you go to admin settings, and then remember here, we were discussing about menu manager, editable pages, and this new button is new this weekend. It's called web templates. So basically in here, you can create a new web template. And this is kind of elements that you would be reusing in several web pages. For example, a footer is a good example or a header. If you're using the same code, you know, you want it to look the same in several pages. Um, you can create it here and include this segment uh, on, the, on several pages. For example, here we were working on this with the Northwest Village Network in Philadelphia. They defined this, um, well, basically this footer message, right? And they said, well, this is the name of our village and, you know, member of B2B and join our mailing list. And they wanted to add the same footer to several pages. So rather than copy paste it in several pages, and then you need to imagine you change your phone number and then you need to go 10 times and change your phone number that you're wasting your time. If you do it with these web templates and you change your, your phone number, you change it only here and it will change on all the pages that are using the template. Okay, makes sense. Um, I mean, there are some, tech lingo or key tech words I used by, but essentially what you need to remember if you have a footer or a header that you want to reuse in several pages, we can help you set up a, 
um, kind of an element that can be re, you know reused in several pages. Um, excuse me. Um, can you show us how that is inserted into the pages? Yeah. yeah good question. So basically, uh, hi Rivka. Do you know if um, remember we added in one of the pages in which one we did? Uh, let me see here for contact. Oh, it's here. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. I think I thank you for the question because I think it helps really understand what what this is for. So this is an editable page, normal where you know there's an explanation and this has been set up, etc. If you go into edit this page, then you see the content of the page here that is editable, and you can you know add the titles and customize it as you want. At the bottom, it's not visible here on the editor, but if you click on the code button and you go to the bottom, this is what includes the, the footer. So basically we're gonna say include the Helpful Village web template footer. This is the name of the template. And that's it, it's kind of empty. And this will be replaced in real time so that we have the code uh, that we define on the other side. So this is what it's gonna take. This will be replaced um, by, the, by the actual footer with the, with the real text. And where would you find that code to insert it? Yeah, so we, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to have, see with, uh, with Joel so that we had a, a training document about doing this and that we release that on the training docs uh, and you find the name of the, of the variable and how to do this in, in a training doc before this weekend. Okay. Is it possible to make a little widget or something that you can yeah. pop? from on the editing bar or something so yeah we don't have so we do have some of these widgets here kind of add an event add a newsletter uh, add the birthdays to a page now the thing is that sometimes you know you can be a footer but sometimes you can add a header or you can add different things so it's a little bit more complicated what you add but uh, maybe i can do one you know for the footer just a simple one for footer which is i think the most popular one i think joan that's a good idea i should do a button for the footer and then if you want to do something more complicated, we will do something more complicated, but we'll do the footer really easy to use. Okay. That would be great. That yeah. Be a, great. Thank you for the suggestion. I didn't think about it, but it's a, it's a good point. All right. Thank you. Okay. We've got another question we uh -huh. should address. It's been backed up by three villages. Okay. Um, it is getting sent a confirmation email when you are manually added into an event. Because right now they're not getting confirmation emails when they're getting added in. Okay. Uh, yes. So when you register yourself, you you receive a confirmation email. What you're saying is what so, when an admin adds another person, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's a good one. We should do that. Confirmation email. Manuel. Yes. Um, I was the one that wrote that. Uh, I was talking about you get it like our call. We have call responders that register people. If they just go to the event and they register from yeah. where it says register, yeah. they get the confirmation. But oh. if they're inside the attendance list and they just add okay. them, yes. then they don't get it. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Makes sense. No, no, and it should work the same. You should have the choice to do it either from the registration button or from the search in the participants list. So it's a good point. Great. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for the additional information. Makes me un, helps me understand because I was thinking we do send an email, but uh, <laughs> now I see the difference. Yeah, thanks. Uh, perfect. Thank you for that. Um, and yeah, Joel, you're doing great. So if you have other questions, I, I definitely I'll take it, them along the way. If I, in the meantime, I can keep showing some of the other features. The other features I wanted to demo today was the photo gallery. So it will look like this. You go to a photo gallery and then basically here you have a space where you would have different galleries. So I have one here and it's called Jake, but I can create another photo gallery, give it a name and it will also display the last date when it was updated. And then for each one of these galleries, you can click on the gallery and contains a list of other pictures in that gallery. So if you have an event, let's say, and then you took 20 pictures, right? You would take the first picture is going to be used for the gallery. And then the other picture will be displayed here. Um, this is a kind of the admin feature that allows you to add more pictures here. Uh, the, but the kind of members and volunteers, they, they don't have the rights to that. So they wouldn't see this box. So, you know, it looks better than this. Um, the other thing I wanted to, to show you is that you can click on any of these pictures 
and it shows uh, kind of, yeah, kind of a large screen version of the picture. And then you can navigate, you have these arrows here. Let me see, just, yeah, you have these arrows here that allows you to go to the next picture. So this lady is my mom. And then to the next picture, uh, and you can circulate like that and you can add a comment to that. So maybe what we can do is that we can add a picture together to the gallery. Uh, let me see if I have a good picture. No, why, why am I here, this weird picture? Uh, oh, God. And now, uh, let me see if I can find a picture in my computer. That's all, that's the weirdest thing. Manuel, may I ask a question, please? Oh, yeah. So we currently keep all of our photos in Gmail. Uh -huh. Are you um, suggesting um, that that Helpful Village would like to provide that? How oh, so? You say in Gmail, but you say on, on Google Drive is what you're saying. But yeah, you like a Google Drive. You know, okay. I have hundreds of photos. Or are okay. you using? Are you saying to use Helpful Village for specific photos, or for just like maintaining all village photos? Yeah, for for me, the photo gallery is a way if you can, you know, showcase the these pictures into your website, right? Okay. So okay. you have a social gathering, many people came to your party and they go, oh, you know, and then you send an email to your members or volunteers saying, well, the party was great. Come here to check out the, the pictures we have, uh, you know, that we're taking that day. But that, okay. I guess that's the same thing we do with G Google Drive. I mean, we yeah. take an event's photos and then yeah. we put them there. So sure. I just, I didn't know the capability, I guess, of storage and... Yeah if it should be main for main or village storage or just for, you know. No, uh, it's for display. Yeah, if you want to, you want for storage, I, I think you are, do, you know, an, uh, an external system works, okay. but if you want to display it inside the website, right? And people, you don't need to take, you know, sometimes you take them to Google photos or something like that outside the website, people don't feel comfortable, kind of say, oh, where did I go? I'm not on the, on the village website anymore. <laughs> that feels weird. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you yeah. so much for explaining. Do you have to log in to access the gallery? Does the member have to log in to access the gallery? Yeah, that's a great question. No, at this time, the, the galleries are public. So it's essentially, uh, you know, everyone would, would see. But I would be interested in, in listening and hearing from villages if you think we should manage, you know, have different levels of rights for the galleries. We started with these public galleries. Uh, but if you think some of them should be kind of only kept for members or, or only for people that are logged in, just let us know in, you know, through support at helpfulvis.com and we can add some right management. Anyways, in the, in the meantime, what I did is I couldn't find a good picture on my computer, but I found my, our, our logo. So just, you know, the way if you want to add more pictures to the gallery, just go here, choose file, find a picture in your, in your, in your computer. You can write a little comment here or, and the, uh, like our logo and then you just save and then the photo is already added to the gallery you see so it comes here immediately and now you see the comment comes here I like our logo so obviously if you're a social event sometimes you can add the name of the person something that is nicer and then now it's added to the gallery so you can you know browse here with the collection of, of pictures and browse from one to the next one well, uh -huh. I missed something at some point. Where are you seeing this gallery? Where are people finding this gallery? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, it's under members. I thought it what 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 made more sense. But you can make it also oh. available on on through the menu manager. You can make it available anywhere you want. So you could put it because I know we had wanted to put a photo gallery on our on our homepage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've been using our Facebook photo gallery for that, mm -hmm. you know, because you can you put photo, Facebook on there, but it would okay. be lovely to have a, a, okay. a helpful village one. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. So yeah, we can help you get that done. One one thing I can show you how I added it to the, to the menu, actually, it, like if you go yeah, to where, menu manager, okay. the way I did it, I, I added to the private menu, but if you wanted to add it to the public menu, you can add it to the public menu too. And I, actually what I did is I came down here and I said under the members, but you can add it anywhere else. If you wanted to put it under events, you can put it under events. 
and I created a new menu men menu item that I called photo gallery. And basically the magic is just that you do, you know, it's linked into a URL and the URL is slash albums. So this is where your albums are or photo galleries. And so if you link to albums, it, it shows the space where you have your, your different photo galleries. Once photos have been added to the gallery, are they no. storable? Uh, or sortable, I'm sorry. Ah, sortable. <laughs> Not at this point, not on this version. It's a, it's a good a good idea. Uh, yeah, I think we should make them sortable. So this is probably what we're going to do is that we can take that idea and we will add it for next month. Something like that. Uh, it's a good point for now. For now, it's just about adding and they're showing the same order you, you have uploaded them. Uh, okay, so that's for photo galleries. I don't know if there are any other questions about that. Uh, the other thing that you can do for villages that if you don't want to put it on your, you know, on your menu yet, you can also just go to, you know, what we said here, uh, to albums and start uh, trying it, uploading a few pictures so that you can see how it looks like, and then we add it to the menu a little bit later. So it's, it's here, your, your village slash albums, and that brings you to the photo galleries space. Uh, okay. There was another question yes. about, um, People that are added to registra uh, registration on an event, can they be added to the newsletter as well? To the newsletter as well? Mm, yes. yes. So we, we are, are actually, we're adding, adding it to the, the MailChimp tag. So we're adding, I didn't say it because in order for them to be in the events mailing list and for them to receive the emails, they need to have the MailChimp box checked also. Mm -hmm. So we do both things. We check the so mail. Both would happen. Yay. Yeah. So we do MailChimp plus events. Unless, unless if they have said that they wanted to unsubscribe, right? If they did say, say they didn't want to participate, we're not going to force that on them. But, um, but otherwise, we assume that they want to be informed about upcoming events. Perfect. So that is one. I have another one, which I, maybe for me is the most exciting one uh, feature. So let's go at it. Basically, here. Uh, you can search a person and then basically this is me. And then now this is the usual, you know, admin profile that you all know, general address member, volunteer, et cetera. Now here on activity is a tab that we usually use for sending, you know, these emails for renewals and et cetera. And then there's the text messages area where you can send text messages to this person. Um, we have been testing a little bit, so there's a conversation about it here, uh, but let's do it together in life here during the, during the meeting. So first I'm going to get my phone ready. See, by the way, today is my son's birthday. So I'm, I'm receiving a lot, a ton of text messages <laughs> that I just found another one. Um, okay. So we go here, just simply uh, go to the person activity tab, send text message. So he's going to receive the, the person's name. And then basically I'm going to say, uh, happy birthday to Tomas. Uh, uh, is he coming to the village party with you? Obviously you can text anything you think fits and just basically send. And then I have my phone here. Hopefully we're a little lucky. Ah, so I received that text message on my phone. Uh, and I'm going to activate my camera. So I don't know if you can see my phone in here. Well, but I received this text message and tried to open it. And it says, happy birthday, Tomas. He coming to the village party with you. The other thing that is interesting with the text message is that I can, I can respond to that text message. So is there any voluntary to give me you know, something I can text back so that we can do the live demo? What can I say? Do you have any, anyone who has an idea for the trick? Because if I, if I choose some text back, you're going to think I'm cheating. And I'm not cheating. Just, oh, is there some choices you're saying? Or? Oh, yes. No, yeah. Oh, you okay. Can. Okay. We see is the there cake? What is it? Is there cake? <laughs> is there cake? I like that. Thank you, Mary. Is there cake? So, I'm, so obviously, and I'm, I type the is there cake message on my telephone, and I can send it to my to my from my telephone to the 
you know, to just respond to the text message I received. And then now that I come back to Helpful Village, you know, uh, hopefully if everything goes well, I can go to the activity tab. Oh, damn, I can't believe I was not sharing my screen. So now I, I, let me start over here again. And then here, share screen, share screen. Okay, so we're here. So this is me. And now if we go to the activity tab, we have the is there a cake, by the way, I forgot the inter question mark, not very good. But basically this is a conversation that goes both ways uh, that is recorded on Helpful Village. So basically uh, this is a message we sent from Manuel Acevedo from, from the village here interactively together. Happy birthday to Tomas, he coming to the village party. And this is the message I typed on my phone to respond. Obviously it doesn't look very good because both, in both cases it's me, right? It's my phone number. But we were trying it earlier today with Joel and basically Joel sent this message. Um, here it says sent on this date uh, with this text and this is what the member received. So basically you can have, we're recording the whole text conversation onto the platform. Um, yeah, so basically that's, that's how it's working for now. Obviously, now that we have the texting capability set up, we are open to other ideas you may have. Uh, maybe there are some automatic text messaging that you think may be interesting in some cases. You know, we, uh, I mean, so now if you have ideas, not necessarily now during the webinar, but if you wanna send us some emails or stuff like that about some cases where you would like to have a text message or your or possibility to send a text message automatically, uh, uh, yeah, just let us know. For now, it's a, uh, you know, we start with manual only. When you decide to send a text message, it goes out or it goes the way on, on its way back. Manuel, uh -huh. um, we had, I had mentioned that the text messaging was coming and we had talked about, will we be able, maybe this is what you were just referring to. Um, you know, uh, I'm in Petaluma, so there's been fires nearby mm -hmm. and yeah. a lot of people turn off their alerts mm -hmm. on their phone or our members just don't have the alerts. And we were wondering, would it be, would we be able to send out a group text to all yeah. our members? Yes. You know, something about a yes. fire or something. Yes, 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 yes. So we definitely will do two, uh, two mailing lists uh, for sure. One is, uh, all the active members and all the active volunteers, right? So in both cases that you can choose to send a message out to, you know, a text message to everyone that is an active member or an active volunteer. Great, thank you. Yeah. No, no, it's a, it's a great point. I was thinking about that too. It's kind of how, well, how if there's something happening, how can we let a lot, a lot of people know? I, I, I will not allow kind of for other people because, you know, I think active members and active volunteers, you will be super careful before texting out, but I don't uh -huh. want to send it to kind of the whole list and people that, you know, would be, disappointed for receiving text messages. But I think active members and active volunteers are so close to, to the village that it makes total sense to, to give you a possibility to do so. Right, thank you. Okay, we've got two questions from the chat. Yeah. So we'll start uh, with, uh, it would be great if emails from members slash users could be recorded in the activity mm -hmm. file. Right now mm -hmm. we only have half the conversation. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's interesting, interesting. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, now that we did it for text messages, uh, we can explore, uh, have a similar thing for the email. So that makes sense. We need to, to investigate how, how we can make that work. But, you know, yeah, for me, sending the text messages when we were doing the text messaging thing, obviously was very similar to the sending the email messages, so just a different channel. So receiving the incoming messages here would be interesting too, I think. All right, and then the other one, Peter says, been out of the loop for a bit. Could you mention the names of all current staff? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So uh, basically Joel that, that is here and then uh -huh. Manuel, that I'm here. We have another person that may have been answering uh, the tickets. Her name is Studi, uh, Studi Patel. And then there is a fourth person uh, and her name is Christina and she has the same last name as I do. And she happens to be my sister. <laughs> So when you get an email from Christina, it's, um, uh, yeah. So it's, 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 you don't need to wonder why does she have the same last name? She's, uh, she's my sister. <laughs> so, 
so we're, we, yeah, so our, our, our headcount today is four. And then hopefully, you know, you saw that we have been growing the number of villages. So as, as we keep growing, we keep adding more people to the team and happy here to, to serve you. Uh, do you have any other questions, Joel, on the, on the call or? No, that's everything, I believe. Um, great. So let me go back to the slides because we have a few more slides we can show. Yeah, so new current priorities. So these are, I mean, we're busy working right now on some of the, I mean, we wanted to show some cool stuff at the conference, really. So, uh, but these are other two smaller improvements that we're doing this month. Is uh, we want to do a report for all the volunteer hours. Today we have a report for volunteer hours, a separate one for service requests, a separate one for check-ins. So if you needed, you wanted to add all the hours that were completed by volunteers, you needed to do some math. And if we don't want you to be doing math. We can do the math for you. So we we want to do a report combining all hours. And the other thing is a good idea from from Jim in Taos, New Mexico is about, you know, what happens when a person is deceased, uh, we should remove them from the mailing list, from MailChimp, not only, not only because, you know, well, we don't want to send them, but it's also, I, I, I think, yeah, I think in that case, we should just stop communication in all cases. It's just nicer. We really want to be nice and not send any emails after the person passed. Uh, so those are two little things. There are other things that we're working on, but are, those are the announcements that we will be making at the conference. So uh, we're gonna be busy anyways. Uh, these are questions that we already did. And, I, and before we go, I wanted to give you this last reminder uh, on saying, yeah, again, saying that we, we're really working hard to make a good presentation uh, for the national conference. And that's October 13th at 4.15 Eastern time. And, uh, you know, yeah, we're investing quite some time to think about not only the monthly, you know, presentation that we usually do, but a little bit more insightful and strategic and stuff, a little bit less about features, but a little bit more on, on what are the, the big picture or the future or the big modules that we will be adding. And we have great ideas and we would love to have you there on, on the 13th if you can participate. So, my I, Manuel, I, I actually have a question sure. about the, um, uh, this event. Yep. Um, my village sends members, I mean, it's really focused on being a volunteer organization. It sends members uh -huh. to, to that event. It does not generally send their one part-time staff member who yep. actually is the administrator for all this. Yep. So um, it would be very helpful mm -hmm. to be able to have that information um, independent of, yeah. of the event in a timely way. You're absolutely, yeah, that's absolutely right. You know what I, what I was thinking, and we should ask the question to B2B, is I would like to know if, uh, I mean, I, I would assume that they're recording the sessions, right? And if they make the recording available, that would be ideal. But I, I, I can only confirm that one, once I have asked them, but it's a good point. But they usually right. record all the, you know, all the webinars we do with them, the monthly webinars we do, they record. So I would, I was thinking maybe the, the conference, they would record it too. But we will ask. Is there a way, I mean, I'm, I'm not worried about the boilerplate stuff that you're introducing people to. We, yeah. we already know that. But yeah. uh, if there are important, as you said, you like to yeah. make the annual announcements, you yeah. know, big stuff. Uh, it, it would be helpful if we could hear the big stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Of being yeah. Able to attend. yeah. So we, we, yeah, we'll make sure you get that information. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's a good point, Rivka. So okay, we, thanks. Perfect. And then before we go, just a few reminders is about, well, there is a V2B peer to peer meeting. So, uh, um, um, a, a, a questions and answers Q&A webinar next week. Uh, you can register for that one on the V2B website. And for those, you can send your questions ahead of time to Joanne Gainen, our wonderful national coordinator, or to our team. And we coordinate with Joanne anyways. Um, so if you want to send your questions, support at helpfulvillage.com, that works also. And we will send those questions to Joanne. And we, we like, if you can send them a little bit ahead of time, that gives us time to prepare 
uh, you know, better answers and stuff like that. So um, that's happening. And then obviously, as we said, the national conference, the helpful village presentation is on the 13th. There is no monthly webinar, release webinar that, like the one we did today. So on, it's usually on the third Wednesday of the month, but we will not be doing one in October because we are presenting two, day, two days earlier. But we will be having the V2V peer-to-peer -peer meeting on October 28th. And then for the rest, it's just other links that are, you're familiar with. And with all that said, I wanted to thank you all for you know, attending the webinar and I look forward to talking to you soon. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.